For us, it gives us a great exposure and opportunity to meet the boots on the ground appraisers and talk through what their challenges are. Data Master, our whole job and why we were created from Rick Lifferth is to streamline appraisals Mm -hmm. uh, while maintaining integrity, right? So we've gone out to the MLSs, secured data contracts with the MLSs to access all of the data. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach. Dustin Harris. And welcome to the program, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, It is uh, September of 2018, and we are here in Las Vegas, uh, the beautiful planet Hollywood, uh, for the 2018 Appraisal Summit and Expo, uh, a a conference that I've been to for years ongoing and uh, keep coming back because it is an absolutely great conference to be involved in. Uh, Today, we're going to be interviewing some vendors that are here. Uh, These would be companies that have something to do with the valuation space, uh, appraisals, if you will. And uh, and I can't wait to introduce you to some of these great companies that have great things to share with appraisers that can help them to to be more successful at what they do. Uh, I want to pause here before we jump into the interviews and remind you, of course, that we are sponsored by three great companies, uh, Alamode being one of them. Alamode, of course, uh, is a CoreLogic company and CoreLogic is here at the summit. Uh, Alamode will help you to do more with less. Uh, you can check them out by going to alamode.com or call them at 800 Alamode. Uh, another great company that is here, of course, is Data Master. Data Master is the ability to be able to download information directly into your report, saving you 30 to 60 minutes per report. Go to datamasterusa.com for more information. One more time, it's datamasterusa.com. Dot com. And finally, we are sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Uh, just ran into a good friend uh, from Working RE and uh, Mr. Isaac Peck, who is here uh, reporting from the field, if you will. Uh, check him out by going to workingre.com. One more time, it's workingre.com. All right, folks, let's jump right into the interviews. And Dustin Harris reporting from the uh, Appraisal Summit and Expo here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm sitting down with Mr. Isaac Peck, good friend of mine, and the editor at Working RE Magazine, which happens to be a sponsor here at the podcast. Uh, Isaac, why are you here? Well, Dustin, uh, we always try to come out to the conferences to to speak to boots-on-the-ground appraisers like yourself and stay, basically stay on the stay on the cutting edge of, of what's happening in the industry. So what are you finding out? I assume you're getting in and out of this uh, CE, the, the, the talks that are going on in the other room. Um, what's going on with the appraisal industry? Where are we moving as a whole in your mind? That's a pretty broad question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, things are changing. Yeah, you know, a lot of technology uh, getting infused into the valuation side of things. Um, what's the, the general temperature that you see with appraisers um, on, on all the change that's going on? Well, I think we're seeing, we're seeing popularity of, of alternative reports. Um, the Appraisal Institute is, is pushing evaluations in a number of states. Um, a number of companies are introducing you know, hybrid products, or alternative kind of appraisal products. So there's lively discussions taking place about what those look like and how technology is going to be changing the industry going forward. I know there was a a, a big class yesterday on desktop products. I've talked to several appraisers here at the summit, so that was a very interesting class. Some of the uh, the changes that are happening, you know, one of the things I love about uh, working RE is the opportunity to really be on that that cutting edge, if you will. Uh, And I don't say that just because you're in front of me. I I really do feel like that's the place to go to really find out what's happening uh, in the appraisal industry. Um, What's your role here other than than just kind of kind of feeling out and 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 listening in on what's going on. In other words, what do you take from the summit? How does that translate into what you do at Working RE Magazine? A lot of it is just talking to people and and hearing their stories and finding out what's going on. You know, say only two to three hundred 
300 people you know, might go to a conference, but that news and, and those, those events need to be spread to the industry. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. So that's why we, we attend conferences to kind of hear everybody's, hear what's going on in, in, in everybody's lives and professions and what companies are doing what, so then we right. can report that in a very kind of like real time, let the, let the country know. Um, what's going on in the appraisal industry. So you, you in, in a very real way, are a megaphone to, to take the information that happens here and, and spread it to the appraisal world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Isaac Peck, um, editor, editor-in-chief of Working RE Magazine. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I appreciate it. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're talking with Mitch of Data Master. Of course, Data Master is a sponsor of the Appraiser Coach podcast. Thank you for that, by the way, long-term from the very beginning. I do <laughs> appreciate that. There. Yeah. So um, we talk a lot about Data Master, obviously. I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, being able to save time, which as an appraiser, as a self-employed individual, saves me money. I mean, it really is money in the pocket, and that's really what we what we thrive on here at the uh, the Appraiser Coach company is helping appraisers to do more with less, to be able to work smarter, not harder, all the buzzwords out there. But the bottom line is to be able to save our time, obviously puts more money in our pocket. You come to these conferences. I see you at these conferences. Uh, why? why? Why are you here? For us, it gives us a great uh, exposure and opportunity to meet the boots on the ground appraisers and talk through what their challenges are. Data Master, our whole job and why we were created from Rick Lifford is to streamline appraisals. Mm-hmm. Uh, while maintaining integrity, right? So we've gone out to the MLSs, secured data contracts with the MLSs to access all of the data. Right. We've talked, uh, not to interrupt you, but we've talked about that here before, and I want to emphasize that because the listener uh, sometimes doesn't understand that completely. There's there's companies out there that, for lack of a better term, they screen scrape, if you will, they, they grab data and transfer it and then put it back in. But you guys are different. You You're actually contracted with these boards and, and I know that's been a big deal uh, for Rick, and, and, and I think this goes to quality. Talk to me a little bit about that. For sure. So an MLS could have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 fields per property, mm-hmm. right? Um, a lot of the other individuals trying to replicate or do a little bit of what we do just rely on the export data that comes out of the MLS. That mm-hmm. could have 50 fields, 100 fields. And when you start adding agent name, telephone, email, there's three, four, five of those 50 fields <laughs> right, gone, right? right? So you're really functioning off of a subset of data. Okay. So that's where having the, we go in the front door, we get contractual mm-hmm, access with mm-hmm. the MLS to get the data on behalf of the appraiser. Right. So they have access to everything they're entitled to. Right, so right. You're not getting stuff that history. they wouldn't be paying for anyway. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's really where it comes down to. Uh, you're not functioning off of a subset of data, and we have all the data, all the mm-hmm. listing history, the status changes, all of that scenario. Okay. So, and we've talked a little bit about Data Master 6. Yes, yes. Before we get there, though, I okay. want to lay the foundation. I definitely okay. want to talk about Data Master 6. However, let's, let's say that, that some of my listeners have been living in a cave, okay? Let's say this is their first episode, right? Okay. Um, talk to me first of all. Let's just lay a foundation. What does Data Master do? Okay, so Data Master... Um, Data Master acts as a bridge between MLS, public records data, and whatever form software you're using. Okay. And the areas that we focus on is moving subject, comparable data, and market condition data, and helping Mm -hmm. you guys. um, So what I love about our process is the appraiser is going to search in the MLS the same way he does today. Right. You're not picking comps for him. No. They, right. they pick comps, comp selection. They're identifying what their neighborhood is mm-hmm. or what the market condition property should be. Mm-hmm. And as soon as they identify those in the MLS, Data Master, due to the contractual access mm-hmm. we have, can go get all of that data on behalf of the appraiser. And we translate that data from realtor speak or marketing speak to UAD compliant line by line, mm-hmm. right? So we're not only just moving the data that's in the MLS, we're translating it to be UAD compliant or to look and feel how that appraiser would like his report. So a 1004 may be formatted differently than a GPAR. Right. And we can translate the data to UAD compliant or layman terms, depending on how the appraiser wants it in the GPAR. So some some listener might be saying, well, okay, Mitch, that sounds nice, but I mean, it doesn't take me that much time. It takes me, what, a minute, maybe two minutes to enter a comparable? Big deal. So our users on average say they save 60 minutes, give or take. Um, That seems pretty significant. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you think about it, um, 
a lot of our users will actually move over 10 or 15 comps into the sales group. Right, right. And then start to eliminate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so if you're doing four or five or six comps and then you have to go get two or three more when they come back and Mm -hmm. ask for more Mm -hmm. questions, you can actually park 10 or 15 over in the report and eliminate out of there. So it depends. It kind of helps you just fine-tune your workflow and figure out how to be more efficient. Okay, so, so this is cool. So so you're saying that as an appraiser, I could pull in, let's just use that that number, 15, okay? I pull in 15 comparables. Let's say in the end I use five sales. You're telling me I can keep those other 10, put them maybe aside so that when I get these revisions coming back, I don't have to go back out to the MLS and research and everything else. I just simply look at those ones that I eliminated to begin with and maybe ask the question, why did I eliminate? Could I consider bringing one or two more in that might be more supportive of, of what we're doing? Yeah, for sure. Or some people will even say, hey, these are the comps I want to consider when I go driving, right? And they'll throw mm. more over and then they'll eliminate as they go drive. This wasn't a good one, wasn't okay. a good one, wasn't a good one. I'm going to keep these. So it depends on the appraiser's workflow. But we really focus on the appraiser does the data selection. And once they select it, we're moving the subject data. We're comparing the MLS data to public records data mm-hmm. so they can see what the discrepancies right, will right, be. Right. And um, make that decision. And I want to make that clear because some appraisers ask me, well, with Data Master, um, how do you decide if it's the MLS or if it's the if it's the public, uh, the, the tax records? And, and correct me if I'm wrong. Because I don't do a lot of this in the sense that that you and I work non-disclosure states, right? Yeah. And so there's a lot of that information that, that isn't available on the public side. But the appraiser themselves, again, they're the analyst. They make the decision on the square footage, on, on the discrepancies, line by line, or as a default. Correct. So when we, when we go build a product, like we're building New Jersey right now, we'll mm. be in Garden State MLS. We've been working with that MLS for a long, long time. We're in kind of a pre-phase where we're interviewing and working with local appraisers in the New Jersey area, asking them what data nuances do you have in your MLS, right? Mm. The one that came up is GLA. This is a common one across the country, but GLA is rarely in the MLS. And Mm. if it's in there, it's wrong. Mm. And uh, finished versus non-finished basements, how do they count that? So a lot of individuals rely on public records for GLA. Right, So the appraiser could say, line by line in the sales grid, I want GLA or square footage to come from public records as a default, but show me when there's a discrepancy between MLS and public records. And they can toggle back and forth, but as a default, Hmm. you could say, always bring in public records first, right? So even a default can be changed line by line. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And some appraisers... um, Yeah, so heating and cooling is another good line. Hmm. How do they want that to read? How do you want to count... um, you know, FWA or Mm -hmm. FAU Mm -hmm. and how do you, so all those lines, and that's really when we bring an appraiser on, we set aside about 60 minutes to work through a live report with them. We do a screen share with them. We help them go through their MLS, see how they select data. Wait a minute, Mitch, you actually talk to appraisers? Yes, social (laughs) creatures that are awesome individuals, right? But we'll set that time aside and just train them and we'll work through two or three reports and we'll push them into the major form vendors, Alamode, ACI, Sephrep, Bradford. We push and partner with all of those uh, form partners. Okay, so no secret, um, the appraisal valuation profession is changing. Uh-huh. There's a lot of data being pushed at us. There's a lot of, of talk about the appraiser being more of an analyst rather than a data picker. You guys have been on on this uh, for a long, long time. That's, that's, that's your specialty. Appraisers should not be spending time entering data, right? Correct. Uh, appraisers should be spending time doing what they're good at, and that is analyzing and, and, and helping to understand the market and the subject itself. Let's parade now into Data Master 6, okay. okay? How does that work? What is the big difference between maybe the first version and, and what we're seeing coming out across the country now? So Data Master 6 uh, does the same core function, right? We move comp, subject, MC. So take the announcement from Fannie Mae of the market conditions is no longer required, right? right? right. But that doesn't take away the fact that you still have to analyze and Mm -hmm. understand what the market's doing. So rename that to whatever, market analysis. Mm -hmm. You have to still look at data sets, understand how to carve a neighborhood, um, associate neighborhoods, jump boundaries. That's really what we, we strive to bring the relevant data that the appraisers picked and let them make the valuation, the education, the comparison, and spend their time appraising. So Data Master 6, some of the big improvements there is mm-hmm. we've leveraged that back-end database with the MLS to bring in all the photos from I love the MLS. It, yeah. 
uh, along with public remarks. And then they're able to set their quality condition right there with all the internal, external photos right there within one pane of glass. This is huge. I want to make sure we emphasize this. And, and our time is short, but I, I, I think this is absolutely key. Appraisers that are listening, you need to understand what, what Mitch is saying here. When you pull in data, so for example, when I go out as an appraiser and I pick my comparables, uh, I might pull in the PDF, for example, and stick it in the work file. There comes a time when I'm now, after the inspection, I'm sitting in front of the report and I am line by line comparing and I've got to understand what the quality is, what the condition is. Sometimes it might say shop in the public comments, but it doesn't say shop where it should up in the, the line for the shop in the MLS, for example. You're telling me that instead of going back out to the MLS, retyping the address or the MLS number, pulling it back up so that I can actually look through the pictures one by one, because none of this came in when I imported the PDF, which was just the one page deal. You're telling me that, that side by side, I can look at all of the pictures, interiors yep. as well. Yep. And the public mar- remarks where, where the realtor, of course, uses his realtor ease to describe the wonderful view of the river uh, that happens to be a sewage plant. We, we all know how this w- works, right? Um, but, but all of that's right in front of me. It is, yeah. So, um, and that, that speaks to the back end database, the, going through the front door, getting legitimate access to the data to serve to the appraisers. So, photos is one of the big. Uh, everyone loves that feature. Sure, right? worth a thousand words, right? Yep. The second one is there's a there's basically a property data sheet that uh, kind of mimics what the MLS sheet is, right? It's pulling and reconstructing what okay. that looks like in a format. So you, yeah. you okay in a format so you can go through and see all that relevant data at the bottom of that uh, property data sheet. Um, it shows all the prior listing history nice. of that property, nice. right? So you can't get that data out of an export file. They don't send that in an export file, but we can go back and look in what's called a RETS database. That's an MLS database. You're getting nerdy on me now. Show me other (laughs) properties that this has been listed prior to, so you can see if it's a flip or not, Mm -hmm. how many days on market it was, all the status changes. So you you could essentially see, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to make sure I'm understanding. Let's say it is a flip. Let's say it's a three month. Can you see the pictures before and after? So you could take that MLS number that's saying, hey, here's another one, throw it in and in three seconds have the side by side that's awesome five years ago today 10 years ago whatever so yes you can pull that stuff i talk a lot about this analogy i give of going to the doctor's office and the fact that we might spend 90 90 minutes at a doctor's office and really spend five minutes with the doctor but those are the most important five minutes of of the entire visit the appraiser is the doctor the appraiser is the professional data master is making it easy for us to sift through the data and actually analyze, which is what we're paid to do. Love it. Mitch, thank you. Hey, we appreciate the time. All right, folks, we're sitting down uh, with vendors today in the uh, summit here at uh, Las Vegas. And uh, one of the vendors here actually is uh, quite interesting. Uh, It is CAN, or the Coalition of Appraisers in Nevada. And I'm sitting down with Tom Boyce, who happens to be a member of my dream team as well here in Vegas. And uh, welcome to the program, Tom. Appreciate you being on. Glad to be here. Now, what uh, what is your capacity with CAN? I am on the I'm the newest member of the board of directors. Uh, You're wet behind the ears, then. I still am. Yeah. 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 How long you been? Uh, it's been uh, earlier this year when okay. we uh, had a, uh, uh, some meetings and uh, got together and put together the new board. Okay, I'm going to ask you in a minute why you decided to join CAN. But before I do that, let's start with the foundation. What is CAN? And the reason, and we, the reason we're talking about this, number one, is you're here, but knowing that there's similar organizations across the nation. So what is CAN? Appraisers are a very underrepresented group. We're not like real estate agents where we have uh, lots of political action mm-hmm. going on. And, and lots get, of money. And lots of money, and we mm-hmm. get emails and you know, write, your, write to your congressman and so on. Appraisers tend to be, as I've heard you say, in our cave, yeah. doing our work. And CAN and these other coalitions gives us a chance to get out of that and get to know each other and uh, work with our peers. Okay. And who, you know, no one's going to represent appraiser interests more than appraisers themselves. Right, 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 because there is some self-interest there. Okay, so, so you joined earlier this year. Why? What, what made you make that leap? Uh, I spent the last nine years as a review appraiser for a very, very large uh, AMC when I got back into being in my own business, uh, I decided to jump in with both feet and get involved. Yeah. And I think this is a great way to do it. You know, USPAP has several places where they talk about uh, doing work uh, similar to your peers or on the same level mm-hmm. as your peers. Yeah, yeah. How do, you, 
How do you know? I know what you're going to say. How do yeah. you even know what that is? If you don't, if you don't spend time with your peers, you have no right. idea whether you're doing things right or not. Right. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, we, we, we quote that often that I, I do work like unto my peers, but how often do we actually rub shoulders with them? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk coalitions in general. What's the purpose of a coalition, an appraiser coalition? Uh, the appraiser coalition here, the coalition of appraisers in Nevada, uh, has several purposes. I think the biggest, though, is it's uh, you could call it a political action group. Okay. Lobbying. We are. Here, we do have a lobbyist. Okay. We are here to watch what's going on because if nobody pays attention, then things like HBCC come mm-hmm. down the pike and hit you blindsided. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the day, uh, we were all in our cave. We were all working hard, and things were going well. Uh, and then and we then, woke up. <laughs> and then we woke up, and we were working for a. Yeah. Uh, not that I. You know. Not that there's anything I, wrong with I, AMCs. Right. No, I hear you. I hear you. No, but that's what happened. Everything changed in everything in the changed. Blink of an eye. Yeah. And 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 the question is, if if more of us had been involved uh, before that, could we have changed that? And and I guess we'll never know the answer to that. But that being said, not being involved today, I think we've learned our lesson, haven't we? Hopefully. Yeah, I think so. Well, judging from uh, the percentage of appraisers that participate in these uh, state coalitions, maybe we haven't learned our lesson yet. No, that's a good point, because I, I think if you look nationwide, whether it be uh, whether it be here in Nevada or, or in other states or states like Idaho, where I'm from, where there is no coalition, believe it or not, uh-huh. uh, don't look at me like that, like, uh, like I should be starting. And I've got plenty on my plate, Tom. Um, but I would join in a second if there was one out there, and I hope that somebody will, will push that forward. But the bottom line is, is, is uh, we are very underrepresented, as you pointed out, as, as appraisers. So let's say that, that an appraiser is in a state like mine that doesn't have a coalition, or in a state that has a coalition that's underserved. What, what is your recommendation for appraisers who are just plugging along and trying to make it work, and, and they've got a mortgage, and they've got four kids, and two car payments, and everything else, and they've got a busy life. You know, uh, our dues are the massive amount of $100 per year. That sounds pretty steep, man. So, <laughs> so if you're, uh, what is that, like uh, a, a third or a fourth of an appraisal? Yeah, yeah. If you can handle that, uh, the opportunity to, to rub shoulders with your peers, learn what's going mm-hmm. on. Uh, I never go to a meeting. It's, it's kind of like this summit. I, I bet you've talked to a lot of people who say, you know what? I've learned a lot here. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you meet, you learn. Just being in the midst of other appraisers, I think that 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 is so key. Right. You know, other people who actually understand how you can get excited about external obsolescence or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, so somebody who is is thinking about joining a coalition or thinking about starting a coalition, what's your suggestion? There is a group, I think, over on the other side here, uh, opposite of your booth, called the National Association of Appraisers. Yes, they NAA. Re- NAA, they represent several coalitions mm-hmm. uh, put together. Um, most states have a coalition. I would just Google it and get involved. Excellent. I don't think you'll be sorry. I absolutely agree. And I'll tell you, if we only have ourselves to blame if another HVCC or something of that nature happens again. If we're not involved, we, we can't complain, right? Appraisers have been doing well the past few years. Uh, and I think that's why we're not so involved. And uh, I was telling you earlier, it's it, we're kind of like the homeowner who says... Why do I need a fire extinguisher? There hasn't been a fire uh, in my house for 10 years. Well, you know, when there is one, Mm -hmm. it's too late. Yeah, yeah. Tom, thank you for your uh, work there at the uh, Coalition of... uh Appraisers. Of appraisers in Nevada. In Nevada. Can. Okay. We yeah. can. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. And I think now is a good time to pause and uh, remind you of our great sponsors. Of course, uh, CoreLogic a la mode, uh, is here at the summit. Uh, uh, what is Alamode? Alamode is the software that I've been using for over 20 years. Why? Because it helps me to do more, folks. And it's all about being uh, successful. It's all about being efficient at what I do. Uh, that's all a mode for you. For example, uh, they have the best mobile technology out there to be able to gather information in the field. Uh, that alone saves me 30 plus minutes per report. Uh, go to allamode.com to find out more. It's allamode.com or 800 allamode. Speaking of saving time, how about Data Master? Data Master is the ability to save 30 to 60 minutes per report. Why? It allows me to download information that I would normally have to either pay someone else to do or do myself. Uh, And folks, time is money. Uh, As a self-employed individual, uh, you know that time is money and Data Master can save you time, which makes you more money. Uh, Data Master is uh, coming out with Data Master 6 and uh, I've talked to them here at the summit about that uh, wonderful product that's uh, rolling out across the country. You need to get on board and check it out. Go to datamasterusa.com. One more time, datamasterusa.com. 
Finally, we are sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Working RE is the place that I go to find out what's going on in my profession. Uh, not only do I come to conferences like the Summit every year, but I also reach out on a regular basis to WorkingRE.com, or they reach out to me via their email. Folks, it is free to sign up for the Working RE magazine email. All you got to do is jump on workingre.com, put your email address in when the box pops up. It happens a couple seconds after you log in. You will want to sign up. It is absolutely free. They give you great information so you know what's going on in your profession. Go to workingre.com one more time, workingre.com. And let's jump right back into the interviews. All right, sitting down here at the summit uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm sitting with Walter Cohn of the Columbia Institute, which happens to be the education provider here at the summit. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much. Now, you guys also have a booth here. So yeah. so you've got people coming up to your booth, and, the, and they're asking you, what's the, what's the most standard question you get? So they want to know, what, what is the connection between Columbia Institute and Orlando? Well, let's just deal with the elephant in the room right off the top. There we go. Okay. And, and so we are the training arm for CoreLogic, but more important than that, we are still the same Columbia Institute as we always have been. Uh, CoreLogic leaves us alone. They let us do what we need to do. We have a sort of a legacy of the people who are were there right, before right. the acquisition are still there. Mm -hmm. So we have Gail, we have Teresa, mm -hmm. and, and we're still doing all the things that we're known for as far as live training classes. Okay. And we are developing new training classes. And one of the big things that they're very excited about is we've got a regression training class that is coming out in early part of 2019, and it's going to be, we call it plug and play. Mm. And in the class, it is going to be hands-on live computer training where they're going to learn how to use the power of Excel okay. to do uh, regression. regression. Okay. Okay. This is this is cool. So let's let's back up for a second um, and and talk a little bit, Walter, about the. You said uh, something about the legacy of Columbia, right? So let's talk about that. For example, uh, for those that are listening that don't know, I know, of course, but there's maybe a few listeners out there that don't know the history of Columbia. Let's start there. Where did Columbia start? Uh, Ten years ago, uh, George Harrison. This is my understanding. Mm -hmm. so I sure. Might have all the dates and figures wrong, but uh, George Harrison started the company uh, based out of San Antonio, mm -hmm. and and it was uh, sort of part of the National Association of Appraisers. Right. And and, and it and it grew from there, and it started out in Texas as a Texas-based training yep. program, and then it expanded out throughout the Southwest. We are now taking it further out. Uh, beyond those confines. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing that we are doing that's a little bit different is we're going to make the training classes more interactive with the students so that it's going to be facilitator-led, okay. but participant runs. Mostly online, in person, both? Mostly online. Okay. We are looking towards the future of doing uh, some online classes where it is warranted. In fact, the regression training class that mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, uh, that will eventually go as an online training. It just makes sense. It's a computer-based sure, class. Sure, sure, sure. Do it on the computer. Right. So uh, as an appraiser, if I'm looking at Columbia Institute, um, is this CE type stuff or is this uh, general information type stuff or a little mixture of both? So it's uh, it's continuing education. Mm -hmm. We also do the USPAP update class, okay. uh, which is very popular. Uh, we have a fabulous uh, team of facilitators and trainers and instructors that deliver all of our training classes and we are as part of our expansion, looking to bring on more. Love it, love it. So uh, Walter Cohn from uh, Columbia Institute, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, thank you. All right, folks, we're uh, sitting down at the uh, uh, Valuation Summit here in Las Vegas 2018. And uh, we, of course, love to talk to vendors that are here. Uh, I am here with Akhil uh, Amen? Amen. Okay. Yeah. And you're with, uh, you're with ValueLink Software. So you have a booth here. Uh, as, the, as the appraisers come in, um, it's kind of a it's kind of a situation where they can go to different uh, vendors, people that have something to do with appraisal. Okay, obviously with the with the term value <laughs> in your name, you have something to do with valuation. Talk to us about what your company is. So with ValueLink, we provide office management services for appraisers. So it's a technology that we built from 
ground up, okay. keeping in mind the appraiser, how they work, and if our system can help them out to better manage their workloads. Mm. So keeping that in mind, we built that technology and uh, making sure that the appraisers who are especially out in the field, they can communicate with their lender clients, they can communicate with their AMC, and staying on top of you know, the process that they do. Okay, so on a high level, that sounds very interesting. Let's get down into the trenches a little bit and talk to me about boots on the ground. How does that work for the individual appraiser? So the most interesting part is we've got a mobile app where the appraisers can use to set up the inspection appointment, call the agent or the borrower from their phones using the mobile app. Okay. And the great thing about our system is it is linked with about 150 or so lenders and AMCs that work with ValueLink as well. Very good. Okay. So that gives them a complete uh, presence for those 150 AMCs and lenders that we work with. They can get the orders to those systems as well. And greatest part is the sign-up process is free. There is no minimum order. Oh, I like free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So tell me, appraisers get a little frustrated with the back and forth uh, between AMCs. Um, you know, I, I go out and do an inspection. An hour later, I get an email saying, how did the inspection go? Well, you know, if it went bad, I would have told you, right? So how does your software help with that communication? Um, the great thing is with the mobile app, this, the appraisers can actually mark the inspection. They can mark the schedule. And they don't need to go in and receive emails, uh, correspond to those emails. What the system does is limits those emails, limits those conversations, and of course gives them the capability of doing that through the mobile system. Mobile app. Okay. You talk a lot about mobile app. Is it only mobile based or can you do it on, on, uh, on the desktop as well? You can also do it on the desktop. Okay. But, but you find that, that most appraisers are using the mobile app exactly. these days. The, the, yeah. The benefit is the mobile app, of course, and then they have the office management system that is web based. Right. Okay. Connected which will kind of keep track of the orders and, and what's happening, the pipelines and that kind of thing. Okay. The invoicing, all of that, accounts receivable, all of that jazz. Okay. Interesting. What is something about your software that we have not talked about that you think appraisers need to know? I think the overall capability of managing your office, um, that is, I think, the key factor here with the um, Connect system. And then, of course, having face time with about 150 mm. lenders and AMCs. Does it give the appraiser the ability to be connected with companies that they wouldn't normally be able to be connected with? In other words, uh, the, the opportunity for increased business. That is exactly what the Connect system does. It links up all our clients on the AMC and lender side with the appraisers that are signed up on Connect. Excellent. So if anybody's looking for an appraiser in a certain geographic location, our lenders and AMCs can have access to their profiles and basically Pass on Wonderful. It's a great tool for when you appraisers to get to more business. So appraisers, if you're if you're sitting at home listening to this and wondering if you should come to the summit, this is this is an example of one of the companies that is here that uh, that you can learn more about by coming to the uh, the the summit. Of course, not this year, uh, as this will air after the summit, but 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 next year considering. So, uh, Akhil, tell me, how do people get a hold of you? They can go to our website. Of course, it's valuelinkconnect.com. Okay, one more time. Valuelinkconnect.com. And then we are also exhibiting at different conferences, including Valuation Expo coming out in Vegas okay. in about two weeks' time. So we will, we will be there. And, of course, they can connect to, to our systems through our website. Yeah. Akhil, thank you. From uh, Tell me one more time. Valuelink. Valuelink software, Akhila And And one more time on the website. ValueLinkConnect.com. Thank you. Yeah. All right, folks, that wraps it up one more time for the uh, Appraisal Summit and Expo here in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Planet Hollywood. Uh, been a pleasure to sit down with vendors uh, who have come to share their information with appraisers to help make them more efficient. Folks, if you are considering coming to the summit, uh, please do next year. You have an opportunity not only to associate with other appraisers, but also to get continuing ed and talk to these great vendors one-on-one -on -one uh, about your business, about their business, and about how you guys can work together to be more efficient. Uh, again, it's the summit, and can't wait to see you next year. Folks, thanks for joining me today, and uh, we will catch you next time. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. 
Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. All right, folks, that wraps it up this year uh, for the vendors at the Valuation Expo. Um, oh, sorry, editor, back up. This is John Dingman. I'm the uh, president of the National Association of Appraisers, and uh, I'm here at the Appraisal Summit with Brian Reynolds. I am, by the way, the appraiser's coach coach. Um, so I, if, if Dustin's doing a great job, I'm, I'm happy to take credit for that. If he's not, I'll, I'll continue to help him out. Brian, uh, you have much, much more time on your hands. Would you help Dustin out once in a while when you get a chance? You know, as the appraiser uh, professor, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do about bringing this young lad into the realm of, you know, us upper elders. Because he makes a lot of money, but he could make more. You know, I mean, there's no question about it. If the kid would just listen to the old guys, you know, he, he's, he's on the right track. Well, if he, he keeps, just, if he keeps coming to the appraisal summit, it might work out for him. Yeah, you know, you know, he's got to come back to the appraisal summit next year. He probably ought to visit at an Axe. And then, you know, we can do a little one-on-one -on -one consult with him, you know, occasionally just to kind of polish his presentation a little bit better. That would, that would be huge. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. huge, right? And he probably ought to pay us very well for that. Probably. Well, anyways, we've had a great conference here. So, Dustin, when you hear this, love you like a brother. Now you're going to snap.